Hello, welcome to the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show. Uh, my name is Renata von Charner, and we are going to look at a part of the Charles River that many contributions know from their visit on the 4th of July over to the Hatchell. So we're going to go across the river and we have uh, with us today a board member of the Esplanade Association and welcome John Shields. Well thank you very much, I'm happy to be here. John Shields is an architect and urban designer and he chaired uh, a, a working group that created a vision for the Esplanade and for this important part of the parklands along the Charles River. So we're going to look at this vision 2020. A group of about 38 people worked on that. A lot of people. A lot of people. It's a wonderful um, um, project, a wonderful plan. And we're going to cover a lot of territory. So in case you feel you're not capturing everything because we're moving way too fast, um, you can co go back and watch this show on YouTube or you can go to the website of the Esplanade Association where you can find the document of this Vision 2020 plan. So John, let's launch in here. Um, we are um, looking, you have seen this map many times, we are looking... I remember the first time that you put that map out on public display. Yeah, oh, that was public. <laughs> years ago. Well, years, years ago. ago. Yeah. So we're looking at the area here in green, the Esplanade. And, and the Esplanade, that, uh, that area that we chose to do our vision for, is, um, runs from the uh, Lock and Dam, where mm -hmm. the Museum of Science sits, uh, all the way down past Beacon Hill, uh, the Back Bay, uh, and to Boston University yeah, and yeah. the BU Bridge. And that's the, the cover of the, of the study you did. And um, so let's go right into it. Um, of kind of the principles that were behind this vision? We, uh, I think first and foremost, I think the Esplanade is a great setting unto itself. And uh, uh, before we do anything new out there, uh, we really need to uh, rebuild what we've got because it's quite fabulous. And we need to uh, reinstall uh, some of the park's uh, traditions, uh, river swimming. Including. We were swimming and people gathering. Look at all the people um, enjoying themselves there. Yeah. Yes. And so, and then the, the other principle, I think you've, that is not the Esplanade, that is from <laughs> that San is, Francisco. That is not the Esplanade, but the, the point here is uh, that this was actually derelict land uh, in San Francisco. And uh, it was, it was um, rebuilt as public park land. And on the Esplanade, we have uh, not the acreage that you see here, but we've got a lot of places where there's just a little bit too much asphalt, too many parking lots, too many uh, non-park uses, and we want to get it back. Yeah. So that's principle number two. Then uh, principle number three. We're just going to, uh, uh, I, this is what everybody in the world is doing. Uh, we realize that sustainability is a big issue, not only f uh, from the point of view of the environment, but also from the point of view of the economy. And uh, so uh, we're, it's one of our core principles. Yeah, yeah. And then your fourth principle. Uh, there are probably five ways to get onto the Esplanade. Uh, today, and none of them uh, can you do in an ADA uh, compliant way. Uh, wheelchairs have difficulty on each one of the bridges. Yeah, that's going to change uh, with the new pedestrian bridge from Charles Gate. From Charles Circle. Charles Circle, from yes. Charles Circle. That will that will change. Yeah. That's, that's the first one of those to go in. And, but that our goal is that that will be the case all the way up and down the Esplanade in the future. And that's, uh, that's your fifth principle. Um, there are several buildings out on the Esplanade today. Uh, some of them are fairly utilitarian and fairly uh, uh, drab. Uh, uh, people have suggested that we want to give it a 19th century theme. We're saying no to that. Uh, we're not planning to uh, build any new facilities, but we are planning to replace some of yeah. the ones that uh, were out there. And when we do, uh, you know, if it's now uh, or if it's 50 years from now, 
they should be uh, representative of the architectural thinking of the day. And uh, in addition to being uh, totally uh, sustainable and, and lead compliant and, and uh, all of those other issues that uh, are important in buildings today. Yeah, yeah. So we have a picture here of that is the emerald necklace and you're putting it in context. I remember the reason the emerald necklace didn't include the banks of the Charles is because the banks of the Charles were so smelly and unattractive that actually the emerald necklace starts on the common, That's goes right. along the mall and then winds around. So in a way, your image here shows an extension of the emerald necklace. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, I, the, you know, the Esplanade, uh, we have some other images perhaps we'll see a little bit later, but the Esplanade is really the, a core piece of a greater network, a greater open space network. It's part of a greater transportation network. It's, uh, when you look at the Charles River Basin and the Esplanade, uh, from uh, you know, 10,000 feet up coming in uh, uh, or coming in at Logan, uh, you see what an incredible, uh, incredibly important piece of the overall urban fabric uh, that this uh, uh, esplanade and the, the uh, uh, Charles River Basin really is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this is not something that the, the viewers uh, can read, but I think it's uh, maybe you can just give some of them and then uh, people can find that on the website because it's hard to, to read here. Well, the point, I think the point here is that really there's, um, you know, there are hundreds of ideas uh, and uh, that emerged in the course of our study and we uh, um, elected to pull uh, 10 of them out mm -hmm. and embellish them a bit and they range from uh, Things like, we, we really believe that a dedicated uh, uh, bike route or fast track on the Esplanade, mm -hmm, the length mm -hmm. of the Esplanade is, is very important. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We think that uh, uh, we also want to be uh, uh, creating or recreating these key gathering spaces. Yeah. It's a, a big issue for us. Um, we, uh, the gateways that I mentioned before, you know, we have all of these non-compliant uh, bridges no, and, entries to the park. And entries yeah. to the park. That, yeah. uh, I mean, you, you come down a back alley uh, at Dartmouth Street or at Fairfield Street, and you know nobody from the back bay is going to know how to get to the and, Esplanade and unless they're from no, here. And definitely no tourist. And, and no tourist. No out-of-towner would find it. No. And, and, and once they have found it, they're going to say, my God, this is the Esplanade. So, you know, that's a, a big issue for us. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, finally, of course, you know, the, the probably the biggest issue of all is um, uh, finding the funding and finding the sponsors mm -hmm. for all of the things that we want to do here yeah. because it is, uh, it's a big vision. Uh, we, we built big boxes and uh, we'll see where it goes. Great. And, and I see some of, for instance, also the the Storo Drive, which oh, we'll talk is a, about is that a, is in a, a minute. It's a parkway. You <laughs> talk about that in 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 a minute. Very good. So um, let's look at um, the context, kind of the 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 roads, the major roads that are in town, and and how they affect the Esplanade. Yeah, this is also a little bit difficult, probably on your screen to see, but uh, that green uh, stripe running through the middle of the uh, the diagram. Uh, is uh, Storrow Drive, and we uh, conceive it as you know really bringing it back to being a high volume parkway, and we believe that uh, uh, a couple of things. We believe that uh, if the if the Mass Pike had been built before Storrow Drive, you probably wouldn't have Storrow Drive. Yeah. And and uh, there's a couple of moves that are as simple as those two arrows near the bottom, which if you could get um, new off ramps in the off and on ramps, yeah. Well, off in particular off, into the yeah. uh, uh, on the westbound uh, lanes, uh, you would get them into the really the high destination area uh, in Boston, mm -hmm. and uh, people would not have to cross through the most historic part of the city to get to work or to get to their businesses. Yeah. So what you're saying is to to make the the turnpike really the main artery and and not and not store exactly. drive. Yes. That's exactly correct. Yeah. And 
and then what we did is uh, when we looked at the whole, we came up with some you know esplanade wide principles, but uh, very quickly it became uh, clear that there were sort of three thematic areas, uh, and they were the areas between the bridges. Uh, if you looked up near the Museum of Science, it was about uh, uh, education and recreation. If you looked down around the hat shell, it was about uh, culture and music and, and passive uh, activities. That's and the yellow, the that's yellow That's the area. yellow in the middle, yeah. yes. And then if you looked at the, uh, uh, to the west, uh, uh, it was, it's a long neck of land that is uh, mostly used for uh, just getting through. And for and running. Running and, bike, and biking yeah. and strolling, uh, but also uh, uh, BU uses it uh, for a lot of their little lounging the, the about. Beach, yeah. The BU beach and their sailing pavilion is up yeah, there. Yeah. So then we we took we developed eight uh, areas that we said you know these are action areas that we want to focus in on, mm -hmm. and the intent is now that we're developing uh, what we call area action plans for each one of these. The first of which so is let's, at let's the look, hat shell. Yeah. But right now what we're going to do is we're just going to take a walk. Uh, going from one end of, uh, of the Esplanade to the other. Starting downriver, uh, we're at the uh, Lock and Dam area. Uh, that purple building that you see in the plan is the mm -hmm. Museum of Science. Uh, there's three major moves that we would like to make in this area or we'd like to have uh, happen in this area. Uh, number one is that yellow stripe that you can see, or yellow line mm -hmm. uh, uh, designated C on this image. And it is to reinstate uh, what was there originally, which was a, a, a waterside walkway uh, linking uh, Cambridge and Boston. And actually, um, there is a show on uh, that that I did several weeks ago with Miguel Rosales, the designer. Oh, yeah. So that's on on YouTube. So people can find the, yep. the design of that bridge, which is a beautiful design, yep. and it would really complete the loop. That would be a great addition to that. The, so, the other two pieces of it is, are uh, down in the lower uh, right-hand corner. Uh, it's an area that is now mostly parking lot, uh, uh, and the state police cars are out there. Uh, and a mechanical uh, uh, mech, uh, mechanical building, a workshop is yeah. out there. And you have a rendering of and that. And we have a rendering of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, uh, the idea would be to make that a major gate, we call it North Gate, a yeah. uh, major gateway into not only the park, but also a, an, an entrance, a much more uh, pleasant entrance into the Museum of Science than uh, what they have now. I'm going to push you forward because we're going to, we're going to run out of time. Right. You have so many wonderful images. We have, and this was simply a, uh, an image of, uh, a big image of what do you do with a big bad garage. <laughs> and so we just went outside the box. We tried yeah. to figure that one out and uh, uh, it's up for grabs. Wonderful. Now we are moving a little bit, we are going back here on the Boston we're, side. The we're back up here. This is uh, the Lee Pool area. It's opposite the uh, Mass General Hospital. The pool has been closed for nearly 15 years now. Uh, it's actually used to store equipment and a very large compost pit. And I see something that excites me a lot and that I've talked on this program many times and that's swimming in the Charles. And to the right, there you incorporated a swimming area where people swim in the river, I think, so that's... This area is all where? about waterfront activity, yeah. boating, canoeing, kayaking, swimming, fishing, casting, uh, the whole gauntlet. Yeah, so um, we're going to a very different area here. We are going a little bit upriver. We're now at the Longfellow Bridge, mm -hmm. and everybody knows there's a very major renovation project, restoration project going on there. And we're very hopeful that as part of that restoration project that we can get um, uh, Starro Drive uh, relocated, the lanes relocated. They will be relocated temporarily several times during the course of this project. We would just like for them to land at the end of the day yeah. uh, under one arch rather than taking up two arches. Which would mean also that you then get gain more parkland we and get, it's technically possible to do that. It's yeah. been studied. Everybody says it can be done. And we have a rendering. That's not the one, but we have a rendering. You have a coming. rendering coming up, but this one just shows okay. how we can bring the park uh, directly into, into Beacon Hill. Yeah, yeah. 
And in here you have this wonderful rendering that which shows that you can gain new parkland and still have Storrow Drive go underneath the Do Longfellow Do all the Bridge. things it needs to do in a safer configuration. Yeah, yeah. I'm pushing you forward here because we, we want to show all these great renderings, these watercolors of, of how you envision this, uh, is a, this is an area that uh, is collapsing. Uh, there's a landing that is uh, marble or a granite landing which has fallen into the water. Uh, uh, the, it needs repair. Uh, it's a great area for uh, support activities uh, and uh, we're, it's very much a part of a, uh, an action plan that we're undertaking right now. And part of this action plan is to have an area like here where you can actually sit and enjoy um, more than just a hamburger or a Coke um, to really enjoy the, the beauty of that area. Well, the nice thing about this one is that it's under construction right now. So uh, uh, come uh, next year, next season, uh, you should be able to do just that. That is, that is wonderful. Uh, this is a, the hatch shell area. This is the area of our major focus right now. Uh, we're uh, hoping to do a couple of things uh, right out of the, the bag. Uh, one is we want to create a new uh, cafe. Uh, we'd like to make it a, an all-season cafe, open year-round. Uh, we'd like to be able to uh, sell wine and beer there, frankly, and we'd like for people to be able to enjoy uh, uh, themselves in that area. And that would be next to the play space area. That's right so in the area yeah. of the play space, so yeah. people can sit out and they can watch their kids playing. Yeah. And then the other part of it is, um, which is major, is the, the hatch shell uh, and its uh, rebuilding itself. It's important to note that the, the hatch shell is really... Um, uh, it's great to look at, but it's terrible for the performers uh, it, in a number of ways, and the audience uh, really can't hear the music very well, And so, uh, but there are ways to uh, get around that, and that's a very big part of this plan. Of the acoustics, like they've done in Chicago and Millennium Park, a very good that's acoustic a very system. Good, it's a, that's a very good model for us. Yeah, yeah. And then the other big part, the other big move um, in the hatch shell area is the, uh, the eventual uh, creation of an at-grade crossing directly from the public garden uh, and into the esplanade. And we can do that by uh, simply reconfiguring Storo Drive as a, a, a one of yet another underpass yeah. uh, in this area. So what you want to do is to take away the barriers that exist now that prevent people from finding the esplanade, from getting there. Um, That's exactly right. So to really right. make it be... And it doesn't point. need to be a footbridge, it can be just a terrace at going grade, at yes. grade. At grade, yes. And this was a, an early concept of uh, what that cafe um, might be. Uh, Do I see a fire in there? Well, uh, the, my, my requisites for this one was that there needed to be a, a fireplace and great. hot chocolate. Oh, that sounds, that sounds <laughs> like a great idea. That sounds like a great concept. And then up at the Storrow Lagoon, now we're a little further upstream, and Storrow Lagoon is a gorgeous uh, uh, open body of, of water. Uh, it's lined with uh, granite curbing, which is most of which has fallen into the water at this point. And um, the, there's a very narrow area for passing uh, along the lagoon and Storrow Drive is just on your, uh, on your right there, and we see a way to make uh, uh, that whole area much safer and much more pleasant for strollers and bikers and uh, cars. And the model boat. The and model reinstating boats, the, the model, model boats, boats uh, yeah, yeah. being in a barge floating on the water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is an important. This is an important slide. It's, it, it gets to the notion of having a gateway that people recognize from the back bay. This is Dartmouth Street. Looking down Dartmouth Ooh. Street, Dartmouth Street actually continues across the back bay, down through the south end, and in Dorchester. So it is. Uh, it is a, a spine <laughs> on which yeah. uh, a lot of neighborhoods and a lot of residents. Uh, can converge and get to the Esplanade. So it's a real axis that you like to, to bring to the river. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, so we are now, um, you know, mixing these images and plans and we come now to the park 
uh, between the Harvard Bridge, Mass Avenue Bridge, and this, the BU Bridge. This is a this is a place where the Esplanade gets very very tight. Uh, anybody who's been out there on it. And again, as with the Longfellow Bridge, there is a move on Storo Drive that can bring all of Storo Drive under an inland arch, and that would that would open up an mm -hmm. amazing amount of parkland. The the B, C, and D that you see uh, in the uh, uh, in the sketch there, um, it could just all flow right down to the river's edge. And it would be by having the cars further away um, would also be make the parklands more quiet, and, make a big yeah, difference. Yeah, and they would be dropped down. This is, a, this is an underpass, and so, yeah, the car noise would be totally out of the way. Yeah. For the most. And then here we have you know, an interim move uh, that we would like to do. is actually inspired by a temporary bridge that was That uh, was put there, in, yeah. That was yeah. there yeah. and was taken out at the end of the construction uh, of the improvements on the Balker overpass the last time around. and. Uh, uh, it was so popular that people said they'd like to put something back yeah. and, uh, and restore that end of the muddy river so that one got a sense of what yeah. it must have been like. In this rendering, you show still the Boca Overpass, but you actually have plans to take it down. We, we would like to take down the Balcaros, as you say Boca, I say Balker. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, um, Olmstead on the, on the left, we have Olmstead sketch. Uh, uh, an original design for this area. Uh, you can see in the middle the uh, the Balker overpass just uh, obliterated mm. the Charles Gate Park and made it a very unpleasant place. And it separated Kenmore Square from the rest of Boston as opposed to being uh, something that was joined to yeah. it. And so what we're saying is that there is a combination of surface improvements and again, with those uh, a, a new exit off of the Mass Pike in this general area, uh, you could really do away with the, the Balker Overpass as we know it today. Yeah. And then uh, finally, we're back up at the BU Beach. Uh, we're almost at the end here. Um, a lot of, of, of projects uh, and suggestions in this area, but uh, let's look at the next slide. that. Uh, really sort of sums it up. Uh, the sailing, uh, BU has a sailing pavilion that uh, doesn't even have restrooms for its uh, sailors, much less the general public. <laughs> yeah. We'd like to get a facility in there that has public restrooms, has some vending machines, has some uh, ways to uh, enjoy the docks and the river views, and also uh, we'd like to eventually to have a new pedestrian overpass uh, in this area that uh, up against the, the, the BU bridge that goes over Storo Drive and connects to directly to BU, to the Austin Brighton neighborhoods, yeah. and uh, even uh, Brookline. Yeah, because when they restored the BU bridge, that was a big missed opportunity to bring down a staircase onto the parklands. Because yeah. right now, you cannot get from the BU bridge to the parklands. You have to go back to the Marsh Chapel then go over the, a, a path, so it's it's not accessible, and probably would also increase the safety to have to have an access there. Oh yeah, no, it would be much better. Uh, it'd be much better. This I think this picture might also be a good place to think of this um, longitudinal um, parkland and the Dr. Paul Dudley White bike path. Uh, which was a, a great innovation, and, and in many of your plans, and we didn't get into that, you actually expand the bike path and you separate it from where the pedestrians walk because they're going to be more and more bikers using that. And um, there's, so a, there's, there's, there's a couple of, there are three major uh, movements, not counting the automobile, of course, uh, but there, there are the cyclists. Uh, there are the joggers, and there are the strollers. And to the and extent the inline that we can, skaters. <laughs> well, the inline skaters fall into the the cyclist crowd. Yeah. Uh, uh, as do fast runners. Yeah. Uh, they actually move at a clip that you don't want to be, you know, anywhere near them, even if you're a jogger. So there's uh, there's those three movements, and we would like to certainly make the fast track, we call it, a dedicated fast track, very close to Storo Drive, mm -hmm. um, and one that uh, would be uh, run the length of the Esplanade. 
and would, t would continue upriver. One of the reasons for us to put the, um, uh, move the sailing pavilion forward of the bridge was to, there's a terrible kink oh, it's in very the, hard uh, to get to get there navigate, in, in the trail yes. and to navigate and so uh, uh, you could you could straighten that that out uh, you could continue that bikeway and and uh, walkway uh, in a much more leisurely fashion up river and it ties in very nicely with something that I know the Charles River Conservancy has been working on which is the um, uh, the bridge underpasses, underpasses. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we would like to support that endeavor in every way that we that we possibly can. Yes, because already now, I mean, there are thousands of bicyclists, but if there are underpasses and with the movement of more biking, there are going to be more and more. And also, I think what you have shown is all these attractions uh, um, along the Esplanade. Um, there's a, a rendering which is not easy to read, but what this red band shows is eight miles of the pathway. It starts at the Museum of Science and goes by the Esplanade and all the attractions. And with the underpasses, uh, there actually would be eight miles of this corridor of recreational area and, and cultural areas all the way up to the, um, to the Arsenal Bridge. So it just that, makes much, so much sense, and as, yeah. as the note says here, it's, uh, it's all a matter of connecting the dots yeah, yeah. and opening up the opportunities. Yeah. So we have come to the end of our show. Um, John, I want to thank you for, um, for coming today. So if people want to contact you, that is your email address. Mm -hmm. and, um, and if, if you have questions for the Conservancy, um, this is our contact information. And I want to thank you for your enormous work benefiting the Charles River, the parklands, the Esplanade, and we are very grateful for your work. Well, I'd, I'd just like to close by saying a couple of things. We have, uh, there are about 40 people mm -hmm. that have been involved in this over the time, and some of them have come in and out, and some of them have just been there from day one. Uh, as I like to say, they drank the Kool-Aid. Good. And um, uh, no time to, to, to thank all of them. But the other important thing, we, we just won a, an international award for this, uh, the Clearwater Award. It's uh, uh, sponsored by Pete Seeger's uh, Clearwater Foundation. Um, and, and it was all about the effort that uh, uh, we as citizens mm -hmm. uh, and professionals and non-professionals uh, have, have, have put into this effort. And it's just beginning. Mm -hmm. Esplanade 2020 uh, is not a plan that was done and you put on the shelf. Esplanade 2020 is here today, will be here tomorrow, we'll keep going one project at a time, one area at a time, one opportunity at a time. Thank you, John. Okay. Thank you very much.